Checkout Tracking by the NPD Group brings you a receipt collecting system that gathers data anonymously through technology we created, providing your businesses with answers. Whether you're going steady, friends for the weekend, or only making out in the bathroom, we all have relationships with our games. But we only have so much time and patience for new friendships. So no matter how beautiful, big, profound, fun, funny your game is, chances are it won't, it won't make it past the first session. I don't care how great your game is, you have three to five minutes to capture people. That's a quote by David Jones, the game developer behind the Lemmings and GTA, and he said it 20 years ago. Today, it's even worse. We have this grace period of three to five minutes has shrunk, and we have less time to capture people, less time to make them fall in love with our game, less time to form a relationship with them. Nowadays, in this day and age, Uploading your game to the App Store, it's like participating in a weird, twisted version of the Bachelorette Speed 8 Edition. Hi, my name is Doria Dahl. I'm a game developer and game designer from Tel Aviv, and I want to make your game ready for the most important moment of its life, the first date. So, the first date begins even before the date, the step, the first step that you should take is choose your date. Now choosing your date is probably the most crucial decision that you'll ever make for the benefit of your game. Knowing your audience means to know what game to make. And if you're not actively choosing your date, so actively knowing who they are, you're like walking in a dark forest with no map, torch, or hope. Unless you're making the games that you would love to play. In that case, you are your own audience, and this is by far the healthiest approach to designing games. But you might find it hard to obtain revenue over time making games to your own crowd. In that case, you might be uh, looking for different opportunities, and the question is how to choose dates that are not your own. And um, you might look for underserved demographics. Um, I used to work in a company that made games for kids. They started five years ago, and five years ago, kids were a huge underserved demographics. I mean, you could literally upload a JPG of cartoon and millions of people would download it. Five years later, Toptail, that's the company, is one of the biggest publishers in the world, and kids are no longer underserved, underserved demographics. And as a matter of fact, I don't think that there are any underserved demos today. I mean, everyone is getting served unless you're making games for like really old people, like 95 and up. If that's the case, by the way, huge fonts. So if that's not the case, I would advise looking at underserved communities. And when I say communities, I mean people with shared interest. Now, does anyone, anybody here play soccer? Okay, okay, good. Does anyone here know this game? That's Top 11, uh, that's a football manager game, and uh, they launched five years ago, and it's, they've been tremendously successful, they have more than 15 monthly active users, and what do we know about these demographics who play Top 11? They might be children, they might be women, they might be men, but one thing is certain, they got to be die-hard football fans. How do I know? I play the game. This is how the game looks like. If you are not a die-hard football fan, you would not last five minutes in the game. Believe me, first an experience. So I guess that sports is probably the usual suspects of communities, um, you know, of mutual interest. But it's not the only one. Um, do you know this game, Covet Fashion? If you don't, I highly recommend. It's a brilliant game, and it's a dress-up game. So if you know this dress-up game space, you know that there are many dress-up games, all of which look like this. Now, you don't have to have a degree in psychology to see that this game is for little girls. Now, the love of fashion, of mix and matching clothes, the love of dressing up, doesn't simply go away when somebody turns seven. So there is an interest, there is a community, but there isn't a product, enter covert fashion, and they have mature-looking models that use items for real brands, 
And you can actually buy those items from the application. This is ingenious. I mean, this is one of the perks of having a game serve to a community, that the game could be larger than just, just a game. It could be a service. You can be managing a vivid community that buys stuff off your application. Depends on the interest, of course. So uh, just to drive this point home, if you look to choose different target audience different than yourself, look for underserved communities. Moving on, first impression. All right, heating it up. So um, probably the best impression uh, is, well, for humans is to be happy. I mean, you don't want to be sad on your first date or if you have like bipolar uh, identity, you might want to postpone it for a little bit later. Um, but what, what is first impression for games? Um, I think that the impression that they would like to leave is an impression of a game that launches fast. Uh, I recently stumbled upon this game, Agario. It was uh, this viral phenomena over the past month. And um, the impression that uh, it left on me is that the game launches super fast. I mean, it takes one second to load, two seconds to connect, and that's it, you're up and running. Now, um, uh, okay, I'm just, ignore it. So, um, one, well, the game is really a small client. It's very simple, it has very simple graphics, and one of the um, byproducts of this is, uh, well, to launch fast. Now, a as a big contrary to this, I want to give you the example of Tapped Out, uh, Simpsons Tapped Out by EA, which is an amazing game, but it had a somewhat problematic onboarding experience. So let's, let's walk um, slide by sli slide together on this game. Uh, this is the first slide, this is the splash screen, and off we go to enter your age to continue. Now for me, this is uh, a little bit too soon in our relationship to be asked my age, but probably a legal thing but, uh, for me, A, so I punch 19, and um, yeah, tapped out would like to send you push notifications, okay. Uh, uploading, downloading updates, four updates, okay, no big deal. No, we lied, we download 11 updates. But we have this donut, you know, on the top. Uh, we're actually downloading three, 628 megabytes, smaller donut. Now, if you have eagle eyes like me, you can see that you have this tap to play anonymously and start to play while the game downloads in the background. Why haven't you done so yet? So we tap it. An intro video interrupted by this message cannot connect to server. Of course it cannot connect to server. I'm trying to download 628 megabytes while streaming a movie. And finally, five minutes into the game, I get this. Is anybody here? Well, if it wasn't for the interest, if it wasn't for the Simpsons, you won't be here. I mean, this is a little bit daunt. This is a daunting onboarding experience. Now, because I showed you a Gary before, which has the graphics of PowerPoint 10 years ago, and I show you this game, which is very big, and you know, y you might not compare, but that's because it's big. It doesn't mean it cannot have a better onboarding experience. So let me give you the example of um, Boom Beach by Supercell. This is the second screen, and the third screen users are already on the beach. Now, in less than 30 seconds time, they're already building their first towers and watching the, fir the first fight, which is the essence of the game. Now, here's the thing. You want to launch as fast as possible. I mean, the more steps users have to take to be playing the game, the chances are to lose them are bigger. But after that, they're already there, that the game is launched, uh, you want to you want to get to the point as soon as possible. So users should take the whole game loop to completion and get this kind of epiphany, the aha moment of what this game is actually about. Um, I'll give you another example. This is a, a little bit old. This is Spider-Man by Gameloft, and that's the first screen. Second screen has uh, one call to action: tap to start and. When, when we tap to start, Spider-Man just jumps into the scene and the tutorial bit begins. Now, during this tutorial, players cannot die, they cannot quit. I mean, even a zeroed skilled player would get to the final boss and work it. Thus giving A, a peak moment, B, an aha moment of what this game is actually about. Now, after players has experience, your games are experiences, of course, they remember three things. They remember how it began, they remember the peak, and they remember the ending. This we are going to speak about in a few minutes. So um, only after uh, users 
actually uh, win the boss, they have this intro video and they download the, the game in the background, which is great. And also another perk of having the intro sequence after the users got a little taste from the game is that users tend to stay and watch it, not skip it. Um, the last example for the onboarding for the first impression is the only pay to play game in this deck, but it's so delightful that I just had to show it. This is uh, Monument Valley by us too. That's the first screen and the second screen users are already playing the puzzle. And now when they hold and rotate, they get a beautiful aha moment of what this application is about. Look at the pyrotechnic of this data. And you know, this is delightful. And it's only 10 seconds into the game. All right, moving on. The date. So um, your date should be fairly long, definitely significant. You should have a tremendous time together, but you should know when to leave. It's up to you to leave. I mean, people get anxious when being stopped in the middle. Stop a song in the middle and you'll end up playing it the whole day through. And this is the feeling that you want your games to have on your players. I mean, they should really have the urge of coming back. They should really miss the game. And how do you do this? How do you, how do you stop players from playing? So we all know this uh, mechanic that everybody loves to hate, energy systems or live system, live system. Does anybody here likes this mechanic? No one. Okay, game designers hate it, game players hate it, um, but I think that actually, actually it's pretty crucial for your game to have one. Um, there's this game, Burr vs. Art, by Halfbrick, and they've been in an A-B testing period that lasted over a year. Now, during this period, at a certain point, they decided to ditch the energy system and see how it goes without. So the first few days, they enjoyed the tremendous retention, retention boosted, but it completely cratered on day four. Why? A, they were burning out their players, and B, players were running too fast on the game to completion, and that's it, they're done. So for the longevity of your game, for, you know, uh, to, for the game to live and for the player to keep playing, I think this is not a bad mechanic, although a little worn out. There are, however, anyway, a, a, a different ways of insinuating users that they should leave the game, and this is again Boom Beach. This is the map. Uh, at a certain point during the first time user experience, users get this map, and as you can see, no enemies on the map. That's the game's way to tell the user, go home, you're drunk, come back later. Now about coming back, the pursuit. After the game is over, after the first session is over, you should definitely call, but do not beg. Come back and play is begging. I mean, nobody would like this kind of passive aggressive, um, you know, <laughs> approach. Uh, we should be really uh, be seductive, and I would suggest a different uh, phrasing to this sentence. Instead of come back and play, how about come back and complete? It makes much more sense. So I would use Kim Kardashian Hollywood as an example because they seem to handle push notifications very well. Um, so. Uh, if you've played Kim Kardashian, and you've reached um, a, a level A celebrity like me, um, you would probably recognize um, this screenshot. This is an event in Kim Kardashian Hollywood. Now, um, these events are time-framed. They could last between an hour and three hours, and during this time, users should collect. They they should you know tap the screen and make action, do some actions, and uh, each action uh, equals an energy point. And at some time, you will be drained up completely, and you'll have to leave the application. I mean, King Edition would say, leave the app and come back, and. 10 minutes before this event ends, they give you this push notification. Your ad campaign is over in 10, get as many stars as you can. Why this is good? Well, first of all, it's urgent. You have 10 minutes to perform an action. This is not like a general comeback and play. And users know exactly what they're supposed to do and how much time it's going to take them. This is not general, this is very specific, and it's also for the benefit of uh, the player, so this is a classic come back and continue. Now, this phrasing would also um, do well, uh, come back and see the outcome. 
after an event ends successfully in Kim Kardashian, users would get feedback, like in every game. They would get rewards, some amount of cash, but Kim Kardashian doesn't give 100% of the outcome altogether. They save some feedback for later. They, there is a variable in Kim Kardashian, the number of, s of fans one would, one would acquire after a successful event. And this is crucial for, for users. I mean, this determines how fast they are going to progress in the game. And they don't get it after the event. They get it th three or four hours later. And uh, by that push notification, when this arrives, they are really anxious. They are really curious to know how many fans did they get. So this is a little bit counterintuitive for game designers not to give an immediate feedback because we've read, in, we've read all those books and we've discussed what games are and we talked about immediate feedback and this is all true, but maybe postponing a slightly bit of feedback can do well to return users for your game. So every uh, now and then, it always happens, user would eventually fall off the wagon, they would not be a part of the loop, and uh, Kim Kardashian does a good job here as well. Uh, occasionally, players would get notifications in the spirit of this one. Only 60 minutes left to get an exclusive item, don't miss out. I mean, this is, they're playing on FOMO, on fear of messing out. They're really rubbing, rubbing it in their user's face here. And I love the fact that you don't really know what is the exclusive item. It's, uh, it has some kind of a variability to it. So. This notification is not as strong as the first two, but it's definitely better than a random come back and play, or hey, Captain, uh, your soldiers are missing you. I don't even know who those soldiers are like 10 days later. All right, so um, just to drive this point home, push notifications should be a part of the actual game design. This is not a layer to be added on top. So when you're designing your game, you should be thinking about the push notification that would return your users. All right, moving on. Step five, have them introduce you to their friends. And by this, I mean have them log in via Facebook. Now, a Facebook, users, a Facebook users are worth three times more than guest users, so we should really think about how to persuade those users to log in. Now, the first rule of persuasion is reasoning. And um, this is by Angry Birds 2, and they give reasoning, and you know, uh, I often made the mistake of not reason with my users while designing games. So this is pretty standard. Um, play with friends, compare score, get gems, you know, they're bribing the users a little bit. I really like this. Uh, we will never post anything without your permission. This is something I often see uh, on web, and this is like clearly uh, on the application, which is nice. But we should really be more innovative trying to persuade users to log in. So um, Angry Birds 2, uh, they introduced this mechanic of presence. Uh, you, you can see it's in the level, and if I manage to uh, get one of my birds hit the present, I will get it, but I cannot use it for myself. I can only send it to friend, and this is uh, a nice innovative mechanic. And I don't even know what's inside the present. I have to send it to find out. So uh, this is nice, but we can be even more innovative. How about uh, unlocking content only for Facebook users? How about levels that are only for Facebook users? If you're not a Facebook user, you cannot play the level. Now, another thing that's uh, about sharing. So uh, usually uh, some games just offer a high score or maybe like a snapshot from the game and a huge S button saying share. But uh, we can do better than this. And this is a, a really sweet game called Alpha Bear. And in Alpha Bear, uh, well, it's a word making game. You make words during the level. And after each level, you get this um, um, photo and it has this idiom, this really corny idiom, behind every mm is a mm, and those blue words are my words that I used on the level, and this makes this whole thing a lot more personal. Now, another good example, I just recently stumbled upon this game from the Nerd Agency, and they have something called the Selfie Score. Um, this is kind of self-explanatory. I mean, you have a high score, you sh Take a picture of yourself, and this makes the whole thing much more shareable and fun to share, and of course, personal. All right, guys, um, let's sum up this uh, talk. 
So step one is choosing your date. Uh, I would look for underserved communities. Uh, second is first impression. You should bring an aha moment to your players as soon as possible. Uh, the date, know when to quit. Um, excuse me? The pursuit, um, call but don't bet. Excuse me, can I ask a quick question? Yes, game, what is it? Why do I have to be so seductive, manipulative, and play all those games? Why can't I just be me? Because you give yourself away for free, that's why. <laughs> Any more questions? <laughs> questions, anyone? All right.